Hello, I'm Robin Wally, welcome to Lenscraft. As you know, DxO recently launched the Knit Collection 2018 after purchasing the assets from Google at the end of last year. Now I recently did a, a review of the Knit Collection and a lot of the comments that were added were saying I won't use the Knit Collection because you're tied to Adobe and a lot of people didn't want to do that. I also had a couple of people tell me it was impossible to use the Knit Collection with Affinity Photo. I've previously used the Knit Collection with Affinity Photo when it was the old free release, but to be honest, there was a lot of bugs in there. And so I thought, let's try to use the new version with Affinity Photo and see if it fixes some of the bugs. And the good news is, yes it does. Today I'm going to show you how to do this and it's actually really, really simple. We're going to follow a two-step process. The first step is install the DxO Knit Collection and I'm going to take you through a couple of the screens there that you just need to be aware of. And then secondly, I'm going to show you how to configure Affinity Photo so that it can actually use the Knit Collection. So let's start with the installation. Once you've downloaded the NIC installer and you run it, you'll see a couple of things happen and you'll be presented with this screen, which is the first one where you really have to make some decisions. And this is about where the program files are going to be installed for the NIC collection. And as you can see, the default is to your C drive, into the program files, into a DXO folder, and then into the NIC collection subfolder. Unless you've got reason to do otherwise, just accept the defaults and click the next button and that takes you onto the next screen. Now in this screen, you'll see all the host applications that the NIC collections detected you've got installed and that it can happily install plugins to that will be compatible. And as you can see, all that is listed is the Adobe application. So I've got the Photoshop Creative Cloud 2018. We can see here, couple of different versions of Lightroom I've still got installed and also the latest Lightroom Classic CC. If you look at DxO website it'll tell you that it's only compatible with the Adobe applications but you used to be able to add additional host applications to run the plugins within and you can still do that. Down here at the bottom we've got this plus button and when you click that, you can actually select other folders that you want to install to. Now, as I've already got the Affinity Photo software installed on my computer, I can click this button, select the location of the Affinity Photo. So what will happen is that when the plugins are installed, there'll be another copy put into the Affinity Photo folder as well. And I'll show you that now. Here we are then in the Windows Explorer and I'm looking at my C drive at the moment. I can find here then the program files folder that we were looking at earlier and this is where all the different types of programs are installed. Now there's two types of program files folders here in Windows. You get the one that says program files and that's for any 64-bit applications and there's also this historic program files 86 version and if you're installing 32-bit applications, that's where those are installed to as a default. The NIT collection is a 64-bit program. The program files we need are going to be in this program files folder. And in here, we can also see Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo is where I told the NIT collection installer to install the extra plugins. So if I go in there, I've created a plugin folder that was the folder I selected and now you can see we've got a DxO folder in there and in there we've got all the different folders for the different DxO applications so if I look in Viveza that's in Viveza and there you can see the plugin file that is recognized by Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom and so on interestingly Affinity Photo can also read compatible Adobe applications and plugins. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. We're going to switch to the Affinity Photo and I'm going to show you where to make the changes to pick up these plugins. Okay, so we're back in Affinity Photo and the first thing we want to do is go to the Edit menu and here you'll find the Preferences. Now once the Preferences dialog opens, there's one here called Photoshop Plugins. 
and we can click that and it will open up and show the Photoshop plugins that we've got installed. Now I've got a few installed here from uh, a different company called the Plugin Site and what we need to do is click the Add button here to add our new plugins. And all this does is set up a link to the folder that we were looking at. So C drive and program files, affinity photo, plugins, and we'll pick DXO and I can select that folder. And that's all we need to do there to create a link between the new plugins and affinity photo. Now the other important thing to remember here is this, allow unknown plugins to be used. I don't quite know what they mean by unknown plugins, but if you check that, what you'll find is that not all the DXO plugins are recognized, and by clicking that, it will cause them to show up. I'm gonna unclick it for the moment, and I'm just gonna now close this. And what happens is that Affinity Photo wants to restart. So I'm gonna click yes, and it will now restart, and once it's loaded, we'll actually be able to take a look at the plugins back in Affinity Photo now. So we'll just open up the image that we had previously shown. And now we can go to our filter menu. And you can look at plugins and you'll notice the knit collection's there, but there's only two showing up. And the reason for that is the unknown plugins dialog I was showing you earlier. So if we click on the edit and preferences again, we'll click on Photoshop plugins. And here you can see the two which are known to be working knit collection plugins that uh, the Affinity Photo software recognizes. The rest of them are unknown. So all we need to do is click this, allow unknown plugins to be used, as I said. We can now close that, doesn't have to restart. And what you'll find now is when you go to the plugins, the entire knit collection is showing. So I'm gonna pick Viveza because that is one that was saying it was unknown, so it doesn't know if it will work. But as you can see, as soon as you start it up, you can now add and use the uh, Viveza application with Affinity Photo. And we'll make some severe changes to this just to prove a point. And there you can see we've made some major changes. And of course, you can create new layers and apply the effects to the layers. And all the plugins now seem to work properly with Affinity Photo. I'm hoping that's shown you that the new DXO plugins are actually compatible with other programs and not just limited to Adobe. The other thing I should mention is that when I created this folder, this plugins folder and installed DXO to it, I didn't actually use the installation program. All I actually did was go back to the program files and I actually copied the original installation that went to Adobe and just copied it into Affinity. So you don't have to go through reinstalling. And if you want to know where those files are, you'll find them under Program Files, Common Files, Adobe, Plugins. And if you've got the Creative Cloud Adobe products installed, you'll see CC folder. If you go into there, you can find all your other plugins installed, including DXO, and that was the file folder that I actually copied over into Affinity Photo. I'm Robin Worley. You've been watching LensCraft. I hope you found that useful. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and share it with others, please. I'll see you in the next video.